So joining us now is NBC News presidential historian Michael Beschloss, former Obama campaign manager David Pluff, and Stephanie Cutter, former deputy campaign manager to the Obama 2012 campaign. Stephanie, can the president tackle all of this in one, one single speech? I think he can. Um, you know, I think this, this is a moment where Joe Biden really shines. The more people hear and see him, I think the better it is for him. It was his, it was his message of unity and hope and optimism through the campaign that really got him through. And I think we'll hear some of that tonight. And what about, Michael, the, the low approval ratings, the, you know, the top issue for voters, the economy, inflation? It's only going to get worse with the sanctions. He's trying to deal with it tonight. He's going to have proposals on energy. He's already announced taking 30 million barrels from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, but that is a, you know, a drop in the bug bucket. They can do more. Uh, it's the highest rate of inflation in 40 years. So it reminds me a little bit of President Clinton's 1996 address when he was facing a tough situation at home, and he said, the era of big government is over. What He what did, he and say? that helped him. Uh, right. Yeah, sure it did. But, you know, 1996 was not 2022 at a time that we were facing a danger to our democracy inside the United States. A lot of people perfectly happy to have an authoritarian government in this country, and it's moving in some places in that direction. And more overwhelmingly, abroad, this, this war in Ukraine, where Ukraine, which had no reason to expect anything like this, is a democracy endangered in a way that we haven't seen in Europe really since World War II. So he comes in at an historic moment. I think if he gives a laundry list like you know, a lot of these other presidents, that'll be a totally missed opportunity. I think he's got to talk tonight about the fact that we are all in existential danger of having our democracy and democracies around the world destroyed, and that there's nothing that illustrates that better than the valiant fight of the Ukrainians that we've been seeing the last few days. And David Pluff, this address was the, there's never been a time when a laundry list of future domestic programs would be less important, correct? Yeah, I think this is very much about the context of where we are. I mean, he's going to have to have ideas around inflation, around energy, some things still left to do to help the American people. But, um, you know, I think giving people confidence that we're moving uh, to an endemic stage of COVID will be very important. I think can speak to the help that's on the way with the economy through the infrastructure uh, package. I agree with Michael. Uh, he really needs to lean into the fight for democracy uh, and the role the United States needs to play, not just in Europe, uh, but here at home. Um, so, uh, but I, th I think, yes, I think here's the 75 things I want to do and Congress should do. Uh, and I doubt that's what they're going to do. But this is a big moment. We'll see what the ratings are. Of course, the world's different today. So it's not just who plops in front of a TV, but who see clips of this. And given what's going on in Ukraine, um, you know, I think they'll be more interested in this speech than normal, which I agree with Stephanie is a good opportunity because Biden can speak directly to the American people uh, about this phalanx of challenges that we're facing, but with a sense of optimism. Uh, and to the unit Unity point. It's unity despite some huge opposition on COVID. Most Americans were committed to doing the right thing. Uh, we see most of the world united, uh, you know, vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine. The world's coming together to deal with energy prices. So I think there can be an optimism here that that kind of approach, uh, which is we're going to bring people together both within our borders and outside of our borders, uh, is the way forward. It can be helpful for him. But at the same time, Stephanie, you've got the Democratic Party, not just the 50-50 Senate and so many divisions politically here at home. You've got the Democratic mm -hmm. Party pitching a progressive, you know, opposition uh, point of view speech tonight. Yeah, well, you know, Andrew, we're a big tent. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it is a little unusual for uh, a faction of the party to be giving uh, a State of the Union on the same night that their president is delivering one. But from what we can tell, it's it's touting the same policies that, you know, it's not necessarily a progressive policy to want to reduce the cost of child care. It's what you need to do to strengthen the middle class and help working Americans. It's not necessarily a progressive poli policy to want to reduce the price of health care. Um, that is something that we need if we want to continue building the economy from the middle from the ground up, the middle out, not the top down. So from what I can tell so far, these messages are very much in line uh, where most of America is. Um, so, but I think most Americans are gonna be focused on what the president says and uh, agree with David that um, there is 
uh, a critical importance in this speech and, and giving that sense of hope and optimism, but also leveling with the American people. We've made great progress um, since the president took office. Strongest economy in 40 years, record job growth, um, millions of Americans uh, have been vaccinated. We're finally opening up. You know, I'm in my office for the first time in two years today. Um, but he will level with them that we still have a lot more work to do. We have to tackle inflation. We have to lower costs uh, for the middle class and working families. And he's going to have some ideas to do that. And on Ukraine, he's going to make it clear with some very strong language that America stands up to bullies. And that's what Putin is. He's a bully. Um, and thanks to uh, President Biden's leadership, we were able to bring the world with us. This is a unified effort against a bully. And Michael, that is, this is an historic moment. There are a lot of comparisons to Zelensky, and he's just talked to the president. But this is a big speech on the world stage tonight. And one has to sure hope that Vladimir Putin doesn't try to preempt it in a split screen moment with some hideous attack tonight. Mm -hmm. He might try, and it certainly would be within his lack of character. But go back to 1941, January. Franklin Roosevelt was giving his State of the Union. The Nazis were rolling through Europe. The Imperial Japanese were threatening the world. Many Americans said, we shouldn't stand up to Hitler. We shouldn't get involved in a European war. There were fascists in this country who wanted this to be a fascist authoritarian system because they said only a fascist system could compete with people like Mussolini and Hitler. Roosevelt gave a speech for the Four Freedoms, said that we may have to fight, and these are the things that we're going to be fighting for. 